Hello folks and welcome back to The Shack. This is Joe N2DI back again with the next installment of my Nano VNA series. In today's video we're going to figure out the impedance of an unknown piece of coax. I'm going to show you three methods and how to do that. The first method is the quarter wave method which requires a 50 ohm terminating load plus your Nano VNA and a little bit of math. The second way to do it is the 1 8 wavelength method. In that method you don't need a 50 ohm load. You're going to be scanning your coax with the other end unterminated. And all you're going to need is a little bit of math to figure out your impedance. It's slightly less math than the first method, but really both methods are pretty simple. And the last method I'm going to show you is more of a, is it a 50 ohm piece of coax or not test? Meaning you won't actually calculate the exact impedance of the coax, but you'll be able to tell if it's either 50 ohms or not. Most hams just need to know, is their coax 50 ohms or is it not, to decide if you're going to use it or not. Knowing the exact value if it's not 50 ohms doesn't really matter too much in that case. So if you want to spend the next few minutes learning another useful test with your Nano VNA, then let's get started. Okay, first things first. Let's quickly talk about some adapters. Now, I did speak about some adapters in my previous video, but there was a bit of confusion there, so I just want to take this opportunity to kind of clarify what I meant. What you should do is get a couple of female to SMA male adapters, meaning uh, the female version for whatever type of cable you have. So if you have BNC cables like I do, I have a lot of BNC cables, I have BNC female to an SMA male. In your case, you may have a lot of PL259s, in which case you're going to want this PL uh, SO239 to SMA male, okay? And this will allow you to connect directly to the ports on the Nano VNA. And you should get two of these because you're going to need one for port one and one for port two. Now you should also get the version of this with a female SMA, okay? Looking like this. So this is female BNC to female SMA. And the reason why is because your Nano VNA came with a calibration kit. The calibration kit has SMA connectors that have either an open, a short, or a load in them. Now, some of these uh, tests that you're going to do against your coax are going to require you to either have a load at one end, at the other end that's not connected to your Nano VNA, or a short. So you can easily do that by taking this adapter and like screwing on the, in this case, the 50 ohm load, and connecting this to the far end of your cable, and this adapter would be connected to your Nano VNA, and the near end of your cable would be connected here. So this way you could have a 50 ohm load at the end of your cable, or if you needed a short, you could just use the short from your calibration kit, okay? So that'll save you a bunch of time and money if you just get those adapters. Okay, we're gonna start with the quarter wavelength method. First, I'll show you how to set up the Nano VNA. This will be an S11 measurement, and you're gonna wanna use the Smith chart. Okay, so the first step is to set your start and stop frequency. So we'll go to stimulus, start frequency you can set to 50 kilohertz, and your stop frequency kind of depends on the length of your coax. And you can kind of figure that out through trial and error. And I'll show you what exactly you're looking for. Uh, in my case here, I'm just going to set it to stop at 100 megahertz. Okay. The next step is you're going to want to set up your display. Now, for this method, you're only going to need one trace, and you're going to need the Smith chart. Okay, so we have the Smith chart up here on the screen. I'm using trace three. This will be a S11 reflection test because you're only going to be using port one. Okay. So now that you have your start and stop frequency and your display set up, you're going to want to calibrate. Now I'll just show you how to calibrate once. And you could use the same method for the other methods that I'm going to show you in this video. Okay, now to calibrate, you're going to want to, from the main menu, go to calibrate, and then reset to clear out what's in there. And then you're going to want to go to calibrate and start with the open. I'm going to screw the open on. Okay. Hit open. Let it do its thing. When it finishes, we're going to do the short. Okay, now we'll hit short. Okay, 
And then the last part of this is going to be the load. Now, since you're not doing an S21 measurement, you're only going to be using port uh, port one. It's an S11 test. You can stop after you do the load. So we'll do load. Okay, now that we're done, we're going to hit done. And we're going to save it to this first slot here. Okay, now I zoom back a bit here to show you what I'm doing here with the physical connections. So I attach the uh, SMA to BNC adapter on the VNA. Now this test is going to require that you terminate the other end with a 50 ohm load. So I'm going to take this adapter and I'm going to take the 50 ohm load from the calibration kit and I'm going to screw that on. Okay. Next, we're going to take my coax, if I could find where I put it. Here it is. Okay. We're going to attach the coax. So that's the near end. Now the other end, this is a short piece of coax. It's like, I don't know, half a yard or something. The other uh, end of the coax, we're going to put in the 50 ohm load. Okay, let's just make sure that's tight. Everything is tight. Okay, and then we're going to zoom in so you can see what's going on here on the screen. Okay, now that everything is all hooked up, you have the coax connected to port 1 and the terminator at the other end of the coax. Let's take a quick look at the VNA and make sure that we're displaying data correctly. So what you're going to want to do is go into, starting from the, the beginning here, display. And then format S11 like I mentioned before. But here you're going to want to pick Smith R plus JX so you could see the resistance value. So it's important when you select the Smith chart that you can also see the resistance because you're going to need that value. Okay, so now when everything is connected, you're going to get this semicircle appearing here. Now this is important. So the quarter wave wavelength is where the circle crosses the center line, the resistance line. So you remember on the Smith chart, everything north of that uh, east-west line is inductive. Everything south of that is capacitive. And that line straight across is the resistive values. Now, what you're going to want to do is move your marker over to where the circle crosses that line. And look at the values here. You're going to see the resistance value and then a positive number, which means we're on the inductive side of things. As soon as you cross this horizontal line here, the resistive line, and go to capacitive, that's going to become a negative number. So you want to stop right at that point. Right there, okay? That's where we crossed over. That's important. Now, right at that point, we're at a quarter of a wavelength. Now, you're going to want to read that resistance value right at that quarter wavelength point and plug that into your formula, okay? So the value that we're getting here is 112.0. Now, if this semicircle does not cross the resistive line right across the center, then you need to change your stop frequency and scan a little bit more so that circle passes that line because you need to read right where it crosses what that resistance value is for this to get an accurate measurement. So now remember that value. It's 112 ohms. Okay, now we're back. The lights are back on, and I got my trusty TI-36X Pro calculator. So this is where we do the math. Now you remember that the resistance value that we got was 112. So now to calculate the characteristic impedance, you would take the square root of that resistance value, which is 112, times the value of the terminating load, which was 50 ohms. And there we get 74.8, blah, blah, blah. So that coax is 75 ohm coax. Okay, so now to sum up that method, you can calculate the characteristic impedance of your coax using the quarter wave method by measuring with your nano VNA the resistance portion of the impedance at exactly one quarter wavelength. And remember that your coax will have to be terminated with a 50 ohm load. Once you get that resistance value, you just multiply it by the terminating load, which is 50, and figure out what the square root of that value is. So in our case, it was 75. Now this next method that I'm going to show you is the eighth wavelength method. 
Now you're going to set this up the same way, except you're not going to terminate the far end of the cable. You're going to leave that open and you're going to set up the nano VNA the same exact way. So you'll set your start and stop frequency. Make sure that your one trace is displayed as a Smith chart and it's displaying resistance because you're going to need that value as well. Okay, so once you're calibrated and connected, I'll show you what you're looking for. We'll zoom in next. Okay, now when you look at the trace, you're going to see a circle, but it's going to start from the left and rotate to the right because you have an open connection. Now, you're going to want to do the same thing. You're going to want to move your marker to where that line crosses the center resistance line. So as soon as that number jumps to positive, you know that you've crossed that line. Now, what you're going to want to do is figure out what, what one eighth of a wavelength is at this point. So now you know that this is one quarter wavelength. So if you look at the value at the marker, it says 99.5 megahertz. So we want exactly half of that. So exactly half of that is 49.75 megahertz. So you're going to want to move the marker to 49.75 megahertz or as close as you can get to it. So that's as close as I can get to it, 49.775. Now here, what you're going to want to do is take the absolute value of the resistance value displayed here. Meaning if it's a negative number, you're just going to drop that negative sign. So here you can see it says 73 and some change. So this is reading about 73 ohms of impedance. So this, you could tell this coax is about 75 ohms. Okay, so that's how you do the 1 8th wavelength method. Okay, now for my last method, this method is just going to show you if the coax is 50 ohms or not. It's not going to give you a number. If you want an exact number, you could use one of the other two methods. But normally you find a piece of coax, you know, and you might want to use it. You just want to make sure that it's 50 ohms or not. And if it's 50, it goes into your bag or whatever you're going to do, right? And if it's not, you, you chuck it. In this method, what you're going to do is set up the nano VNA just like the quarter wave method. Everything will be exactly the same. Start and stop frequency, calibrate it, do the whole shebang, attach it to the S11 port. Now, once you attach it and the other end is open, you're going to get a line like this. Now, at the far end, you're going to want to attach that 50 ohm terminator. Now, watch what happens. So now, the marker is going to line up with the center of the Smith chart because you have a 50 ohm piece of coax with a 50 ohm load that's perfectly resistive. So you're gonna end up right in the middle of Smith chart. So now if you have 50 ohm coax, you're just gonna see a dot in the center. Now, if your terminator is like not a perfect 50 ohm load or the coax is close to 50 ohms, you know, maybe it's a little bit off, you might get a little bit of a smear in the center of the Smith chart, like a bigger dot or, you know, like a little bit of a blob or something, but it'll be a dot. If you have something like 75 ohm coax, you're going to get something other than this. Now let me attach the piece of 75 ohm coax and see. Okay, so there's a 75 ohm coax. I'm going to put the terminator on the end and bang. We have a circle here or a semicircle. Okay, so this could be your quick and dirty test. If you get a dot, then you have 50 ohm coax. And if you get anything other than a dot, like a circle or a semicircle, some kind of an arc like this, then there's a mismatch, meaning that your cable is not 50 ohms. So you can use that as a quick and dirty method to sort through your cables. Okay, now the last thing I want to show you is uh, some interesting results I got with another piece of coax. And as you can see here, it's labeled 75 ohms. Okay, now let's just test that. Now this is a brand new piece of coax that came with a, with a piece of equipment. It actually came with an oscilloscope. Okay, so let's take a quick look. Okay, so I've attached it to the nano VNA and let's use the eighth wavelength method, okay? So I'm gonna find whatever the quarter wavelength um, value is and I'm gonna cut that in half and move the marker over to read what that resistance value is. So let's find the quarter wavelength value. Now, as soon as that J number turns positive, I know I crossed the line. Okay, so around there, that's our quarter wavelength. So that's about 48 megahertz, 48.026. So now we're going to want to go to uh, 24 megahertz, 24.01. Okay, so that's, uh, that's as close as I can get. Now take a look at that resistance value. That says 64 ohms. So using this method, this is negative 64, but you're going to want to take the absolute value of that. Now we're getting 64. But the cable said it was 75 ohms, so what the heck is going on? Is this method broken? All right, let's try the uh, quarter wavelength method. So I'll stick the 
uh, 50 ohm terminator at the end. And let's see what the resistance is there and plug it into our formula. Okay, so there's the terminator. Okay, so that's the quarter wavelength point right there. And what are we getting? 88.75 ohms. So let's plug that into our formula. Okay, we're back. The lights are on. I got the TI-36X out. And the value that we got was 88.75. So it would be 88.75 times 50. So we'd want the square root of 88.75 times 50. And we're getting 66 ohms. And even the eighth wave method gave us a reading around 60-something ohms. So what's going on here? So the problem actually is the coax. So what sets the value of the characteristic impedance of coax? Well, there's a few things. So the diameter of the inner conductor, the diameter of the dielectric, and the diameter of the shield matter. There could be slight differences in the density of the dielectric or variations in the diameter of the inner or outer conductors. Now that can happen during manufacturing because it's just a bad piece of coax, or the coax could be crushed or damaged in some way, or water has seeped into it and it's destroying the dielectric. So if you get a weird impedance value, you could check it with a couple of methods, but it's probably a bad cable. Either it's bad from manufacturing or it was damaged. Okay, folks, so that's how you measure the characteristic impedance of your coax. All you need is your VNA, a calculator, a couple of adapters, and your calibration kit. And not only did you learn a couple of methods of figuring out what your impedance is, you also learned what gives coax the impedance it has. So remember, if you come across a weird piece of coax that has weird values, it's probably either poorly manufactured or damaged in some way. I hope you found that useful. Stay tuned for more videos in this series. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments below. So from the Shack of Joe, November 2, Delta, India, I wish you all good health and 73. Bye-bye.